Well, that was the sentence handed down to convicted Emanuel AME church shooter Dylan Roof this afternoon. Roof appeared in state court nearly three months after he was sentenced to death in federal court. We have team coverage right now covering Roof's guilty plea. We have Bill Sharp, Karina Bolster and Carter Coyle all have been at the courthouse this afternoon where both the family members of the victims and Roof's grandfather spoke. And we're going to show you some new video of Roof in court today after he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole on each of nine murder counts after he shot and killed nine people at Mother Emanuel AME Church in June of 2015. Roof pleaded guilty to those charges today, avoiding a second death penalty trial. Bill Sharp is downtown right now. So Bill, what was the emotion like at the courthouse today? The emotions, Debbie, as you can imagine, were all over the place from sadness to anger to relief, quite frankly, that it's all over now for Dylan Roof. He will now await his death penalty in a federal prison, we think, perhaps in Terre Haute, Indiana. In court today, uh, in response to the judge's questions, Dylan Roof said he had a ninth grade education, but was able to get a GED, which is a high school equivalency. When the judge said, have you, have you done any jobs? Did you work after you got your D GED? He said, well, yes, sir, I cut grass for a living. That's a brief picture of Dylan Roof. Now, family members were allowed in court to, to say how they felt about Dylan Roof or the sentencing, as well as representatives of family members. Karina Bolster uh, has more on that. Karina, it was quite a day in court today. Ethel Lance's daughter made some, some terrific comments. He, she did, Bill, and as expected, Dylan Roof didn't make any statements in court at all. As we mentioned during the federal trial, he didn't speak on behalf during his sentencing phase while well, the same applies today. As for Ethel Lance's daughter, she made some very powerful comments in court today. Now she was actually the final person to speak on behalf of the families. She brought the courtroom back to Roof's initial bond hearing days after his arrest in Shelby, North Carolina. She talked about how she forgave him then and still does today. Here's what else she had to say. Why today? To let everybody know the chapter and my life right now today is closed. I will not open that book again. And I just want to say, have mercy on your soul. Now, she was the only child of one of the victims to speak in court today. Other brothers and sisters of the family members spoke in court along with the current pastor of Mother Emanuel AME Church just down the street from where we're standing, Bill. Right, so it's all over for Dylan Roof now. It is for now, unless something happens with his, uh, with the motion for a new federal trial. So for that, we will have to wait and see what happens in that regard. Karina, thanks so thanks much. much. Carter Coyle was inside the courtroom today, and she gives us more now on the feelings of being in the courtroom, the emotions expressed, including the anger, the sadness, the sorrow, and perhaps the relief as well. Carter? Bill, that's a very good uh, recap of kind of how things felt in there today. There were about 30 family members in the courtroom. Some of them were crying and started crying as soon as they saw Dylan Roof walk in. Overall, it was quiet, although there was one part in particular that really seemed to agitate a lot of the family members, and that's when Dylan Roof's grandfather decided that he was going to speak to the court. Uh, Joe Roof started his speech by saying, nothing's all bad, Dylan is not all bad. Uh, and that he felt like the devil was at play in this situation. He referenced an old uh, Sunday school class lesson he did once. Well, family members were in court. They were shaking their heads. One, one, one woman got up angrily and left the courtroom really quickly. Mr. Roof said several times, though, how sorry he was for all of the victims, that he couldn't imagine what they've been going through. Uh, and he even said that uh, as a former attorney, he said he did feel like justice was served in this case, that the system worked worked in this case. Um, he said that he ached to hold his grandson again. Cynthia Hurd's brother told us later, I don't ever get to hold my sister again. So Bill, proof that there are uh, still some having a hard time accepting those apologies from the Roof, Roof family. Uh, however, many of the victims and their family members have said that they do forgive Dylan Roof. And today, a lot of relief as the state court and trial of all of this is over. 
Carter, thank you. I talked with Malcolm Graham in a news conference after the court hearing today about did he forgive Dylan Roof for what he did to Malcolm's sister, Cynthia Graham. Heard, you'll want to hear what he has to say. That's coming up tonight at 6. Debbie, I'll throw it back to you. Good job, Bill. Thank you. It was on June 17th of 2015 that Roof shot and killed nine people. After a Bible study at Mother Emanuel AME, he was arrested the next day in Shelby, North Carolina. On December 15th of last year, Roof was found guilty of 33 federal charges. This past January, a federal jury sentenced Roof to death. Now today, Roof entered a guilty plea in state court. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole. For more on the family's reaction to today's hearing and what Dylan Roof's grandfather had to say in court, you can head to our website, live5news.com.